All right, so in this video, I wanna walk you through my tea set, walk you through how to make a really amazing cup of organic high mountain oolong tea, and as well as talk about and share with you many of the key components that you'll need to really brew your own perfect cup of tea. Now, I have in front of me my tea sets, and I have underneath my tea towels is water that is about 195 which is usually the ideal temperature for high quality organic oolong tea so what i'm going to do is take about for me the way i'm brewing right now and the way i'm liking the flavor is i'm usually doing almost almost like two tablespoons or so a little bit less of tea based on this pot and the pot is I'm not exactly sure on the size, but really the, the, the most important thing is to just experiment and find ratios that work for you. Now what I'm doing right now is called just sort of rinsing or waking the tea up. And this is something that you really want to do for high quality rolled oolongs like this, because this rinse will allow you one really special thing, which is I've poured the water out. Now I get to really take in the aroma and the sweet, just floral, amazing, honey, orchid kind of thing that's going on inside the teapot. And that's a really important step that you need to do to really appreciate and to really savor the, the quality that you're getting here. Now, obviously I'm using the tea from organicoolongtea.com because for me, that's what I source because I think it's the best. And pretty much everyone that I've ever let try it says the same exact thing. So that's why I'm using it. So the water again here is about 195. So I'm just gonna fill up my teapot and then I'm going to set the timer here for about two minutes. Cause I found that this makes a cup of tea that I really enjoy the flavor and the sensations of, so that's what I'm doing. And one important thing about water while we're on the conversation is water is really the, the mother of tea. Water is the most important aspect of tea. So if you're gonna spend money, which hopefully you do, to get a really high quality tea that you like and you enjoy, depending on your unique preferences and flavors, Hopefully you'll do the due diligence and use the best quality water that you can. So what I'm using in this is fresh local spring water that I happen to be lucky enough to go and gather myself. And that's really ideal and that's really the best. But if you can't do that, if it's not accessible to you, use the best quality water that you can because that will dramatically influence the, the kind of tea and the quality of tea that you'll produce. You get what you pay for. And tea is really, amazingly, the most affordable luxury. Meaning even this tea that I have here, which is on organicoolongtea.com, it's some of the best tea really that you can possibly buy. <laughs> and it's tea that is usually not available to Westerners. Because in fact, the tea or the farm that I source the tea from sells out their entire crop before they even have it. So the second thing that you also want to do while it's available is just once you pour off your first brew, take another aroma and just sort of move the tea leaves around, observe, see what's been happening and really take the time to just breathe, <laughs> breathe in all of those aromas because it's been shown and it's been found scientifically that many of the healing and detoxifying properties of high quality oolong tea are actually in the aromatic compounds that you smell. And there's been some studies that have shown that basically if you drink this, these aromatic compounds come out through your lungs. They come out through your respiratory system and actually help to really detoxify, cleanse and protect the respiratory system. Which kind of once this became really well known, that's when the price of these kinds of teas really shot up because people drink a lot of tea and people also often smoke a lot of cigarettes, smoke a lot of tobacco in these Asian countries. 
So when they found out, oh, if I drink, I'm already drinking tea every day, but if I drink this tea, then it'll actually help protect me from all the cigarettes I'm smoking, and boom, the price went up. But anyways, back to the point that what I was saying is even though this is high, extremely high quality, extremely expensive, extremely elite and hard to get, you can drink it for less than a dollar a cup, meaning depending on how you brew it and how you buy it, you could drink it for 60 or 75 cents a cup, which is so cheap. And mm, even the first brew of this is just superb. But again, this is how I like to brew it. It's definitely on the stronger side. And I don't always brew it like this. I don't always drink it like this, but sometimes when I just really am craving that flavor and really want to be immersed in it, this is how I brew. So for less than a dollar a cup, 65, 75 cents a cup, which is I mean, you can't, you can't really name another thing that has such amazing health benefits and tastes really good and makes us feel really good. And you can get at such an elite, luxurious quality for so little money. Because there's real power and alchemy in taking time to appreciate something. In neuro, neuroscience and modern scientific findings, as well as ancient personal development techniques, all say the same thing, that basically the more you practice repetition of appreciation or repetition of being in the moment or being in tune with your senses and your body, the more it's going to become a reflex and the more you're going to just do that as a second sort of second nature. So in a, a way like that, tea prevent, presents a, an opportunity to practice mindfulness, to practice gratitude, to practice appreciation and being in tune with your senses which is all bringing you back to the present moment and really retraining your brain to look for more things to appreciate and to look for more things to feel good about and for more things to enjoy and that's really one of the ways in which tea is just an amazing modality both in present times and throughout history for an extremely long time, people have been using tea in this way. And we're really amazing, really fortunate and lucky. Or it's, it is really amazing, I should say. And we are really fortunate and we are really lucky to be able to access really high quality tea and to have the time and the energy to just sit back and enjoy it. So, that leads us to part of the health benefits of tea and really one of the myths that we can shatter because a lot of people, especially in the health community, we're all really kind of conditioned that, you know, all, you know, quote unquote stimulants are bad, which most of the time is perhaps true for most people in most situations. However, people often apply the same thing to tea because we're conditioned to think, well, tea is just all the same. And if I just go to the store, get tea, or if I go to Starbucks or the coffee shop and get a, a tea or whatever, I'll get green because it's healthier because it has more antioxidants, and I'll get maybe organic because that's better, but then I'll drink it and I'll still feel weird or I'll still feel tweaked out. Most of the time, why that is could be, well, first, if a person has a pretty significant adrenal imbalance or nervous system imbalance or they're just stressed out, Obviously, we have to take that into accord, but ruling that out and just focusing on the tea for a second, usually it comes down to quality because most of the stuff that we get in America is not very good. And if it's in a tea bag, it's even worse. And usually it is just stuff that they sweep up off the floor because basically tea is a very, it's a very complex substance. And what I'm talking about here is I, I can vouch for this from my own personal experience and vouch from talking to people and, you know, working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis for health consultations and coaching and all that, and just really tuning into how people are responding and what people are thinking and feeling about tea in particular. And it really just comes down to quality because if you drink low quality tea, you're probably going to feel tweaked out. You're probably not going to feel very good. 
And especially if you take low quality tea and brew it in the wrong way, which happens most of the time, because each kind of tea requires a different type of brew and a different type of water temperature. So if we overbrew it and we have low quality tea that was probably not grown in a very good way, or for example, if you pick the older leaves off the tea plant, usually those have more bitter alkaloids or more caffeine, if we want to use that as a reference. So the flavor is not as good, the effects aren't as good, and we don't feel as good, which is also validated scientifically, which if you go to my website, organicoolongtea.com, and you read through there, I've referenced a lot of studies that basically show higher quality tea equals more benefits, equals better flavor. And that higher quality is usually defined as how it's grown, how it's picked, how it's processed, how it's brewed. Every step of the way has been shown or at least indicated that doing it in a better way, in a higher quality way, equals better feelings, better health benefits, and better flavor. And there's even some studies that have shown that even tea brewed more consciously and intentionally tastes better. So all of this is just pointing to quality is king. And if we look at any of the health benefits of tea, it's all pretty amazing and pretty profound. <laughs> and it's one of the most, if not the most, scientifically researched plant substance that there is. So really there's lots of history and lots of science that indicates that this is probably one of the most health promoting things that we could possibly consume. So again, the, the myth or the whatever that I wanted to address originally was this whole thing about caffeine or high quality tea being a, you know, a huge stimulant. And yeah, if you drink a ton of it and you didn't eat, then yeah, you could probably start to feel pretty tweaked out. But the thing is, is that if you have high quality tea that's actually produced and processed and brewed in a, an intelligent, decent way, then usually people feel a clarity, they feel sort of an awakening, but they don't feel kind of a, a nervous jitteriness or an anxiety that is so often associated with things like coffee or other kinds of stimulants. And that is partially because tea has a rich concentration of L-theanine, which L-theanine is actually really, in my opinion, just an amazing amino acid, an amazing substance, which has a huge array of health benefits for the, the physical body. So just in the, in the short, concise sense, L-theanine helps to put our brain into more of an alpha state. So we feel more relaxed, we feel more calm, we feel in the moment, more in the moment. And that also helps to release dopamine, which is kind of a reward pleasure chemical, and also helps to release GABA, which helps to sort of relax and soothe our nervous system. And if you look at the culture surrounding tea, it's usually not necessarily one of like crazy stimulation and jitteriness. Because usually, if you look at the cultural associations for tea, it's usually uh, relaxing, calming, like social interaction, and just sort of sitting down and taking time to just chill and be present. Whereas other stimulants and other plant drugs, they have way different connotations <laughs> and way different cultural sort of uh, uses and associations. So. We have some scientific validation for this. When we look at L-theanine, we look at the benefits of L-theanine, and we look at studies that have shown that basically higher quality tea has more L-theanine. So higher quality tea is gonna have more of that calming, relaxing effect. So on top of that, we could also reference the historical thing, which we've already taught, touched at, but also if we wanna look at more just chemistry, we have to look at the catechins and the polyphenols. And it's, it's in particular, the most well-studied is EGCG, which is one of the most well-studied catechins, one of the most well-studied chemicals. And these, this family of molecules, catechins and polyphenols, have been shown to be really protective to the nervous system, 
protective to the brain and really helping to you know decrease inflammation throughout our nervous system and really throughout our body so that really just adds another layer of how it can be a supportive kind of longevity tonic and then even on top of that another thing which is really i think particularly relevant for most of us is that these things can help to decrease inflammation in our gut because most of us deal with a lot of stress all the time you know we're always looking at our phones we're always working we always have so much to do all the time and then on top of that we've been raised in this modern world we probably at some point in our lives ate a lot of processed foods ate a lot of allergenic foods and maybe didn't have access to the best water and maybe take took pharmaceutical drugs at some point so often this can lead to just a low grade of just chronic inflammation throughout the body and more specifically inflammation of the gut meaning our intestines and our stomach and really our whole digestive tract and that can really impair digestion impair absorption cause constipation and really just keep us functioning at a lower level of health because we might eat better foods but if we're not absorbing them then it's not really doing us as much of good so usually what people really notice about this high quality tea is a really kind of a, a gentle cleansing detoxif detoxification effect because when it starts to release the inflammation in the gut usually people start just go to the bathroom a whole bunch and i can say from when i first started drinking there would be days where i would just go to the bathroom like four or five times after drinking a pot of tea and it wasn't like a really uncomfortable like you know liquid explosion like i'm running to the bathroom but just a natural elimination and probably just inflammation that i had hanging out because like you like everyone else you know we all don't have perfect lives or perfect lifestyles so on top of that there's also obviously the cleansing effect that comes through drinking a lot of a liquid so flushing the kidneys and really helping to eliminate metabolic waste and, and byproducts mm, it's amazing <laughs> So with brewing in this style and brewing this quality of tea, keep in mind that you can usually brew it at, at least four times without really trying too hard, if not more. In this particular batch that I have going here, I can probably brew way more than that if I want to. It really just comes down to your flavor profile and your flavor preference. So we've taken kind of a lot of tangents and a lot of little sidetracks, and that's just because there's a lot to talk about with tea. So we talked about water, talked about tea, and we talked about quality. And I'll share with you a little bit about my tea set. And actually I'll grab one thing really quite quickly, which you can actually still hear me while I'm on camera, which is cool. So what I just grabbed was part of my Gaiwan. Obviously I didn't grab the lid, but Basically, this setup is a little more complicated. Uh, you could just get a Gaiwan. These are, you could probably get one for like eight or 10 bucks. You get it for really cheap, brew that way. You could get a clay teapot, that's also a method. Or you could just brew it in a mug. I do that sometimes as well. It's kind of just your personal preference. Mm. But for me, I invested a decent amount of money and bought a clay teapot, which is, this is lava clay which is really from only one specific region in Taiwan is only made by one specific artisan and I also have lava clay cups which those are definitely on the more expensive side I think this cup was like 50 bucks just for one cup and the pot was maybe 300 but you don't have to do that it just kind of depends on how serious you want to get I just happen to be pretty gung-ho about things so when I get into it I get into it and most importantly though i think this is something that i'm the most proud of and this is a strainer for tea but it is completely made from plants so that my tea never has to touch metal never has to touch plastic so it only touches natural materials now obviously for the video i used like a plastic uh, measuring spoon usually i just 
eyeball it and pour it out or I have bamboo utensils. I just kind of did it this way to, I guess, for the convenience of uh, being on camera. But, so this is made out of a cotton mesh and bamboo. So that my tea never has to touch anything other than the best stuff. And then I have here, which is a, just another clay serving cup or serving pot. This one's cool because it's handmade, obviously, and it's kind of shaped like bamboo. And then from there, I have this sandalwood personal tea tray, which I really like as well and allows me to sort of take my tea set around and take it outside if I want to, take it in the living room, take it in my office, be at the computer working and do it. And this allows me to make tea in a really high quality way and also have it be kind of portable and convenient. And also, as you saw earlier, when I did my rinsing, you can just rinse right here. Don't even have to get up or worry about making a mess. But really, this is what I found through my personal experience and what I enjoy. And that's why I bought it. For you and your tea journey, it could be as simple as just a mug. Or you could get yourself a mug that you really like and that could be your mug. Or you could get more complex and get things like this and build up a whole tea set. So I guess the last thing that I want to talk about is just the flavor and the experience of drinking high quality organic oolong tea. And I know there's a lot of words in there, so we can talk a little bit about what each one means. So organic obviously means that it's grown without any chemicals. And the particular stuff on organicoolongtea.com was grown using really pioneering biodynamic and holistic methods that the farmer himself just sort of came up with to really take his tea to the next level. And because this particular batch is organic and they didn't use any chemicals and because it's so high quality, it has a much more substantial brewing power, which if you've tried it, which many of you have already and have given me amazing feedback, you know exactly how, how much brewing power it has and how much flavor it has. So that's the organic part. And what makes this particular batch even more unique is that it has a little bit of concubine oolong or bug bitten oolong going on. Which what that means is sometimes, just randomly, there is this leaf hopper that will show up and kind of just nibble on the leaves, but not really eat it. It'll just kind of nibble and then leave. And this is really just serendipitous. No one can control it. No one knows really how or when and where to predict it. But it gives the, the tea a really unique flavor, like a really distinct sweetness and just really embodies a lot of the sort of ancient Taoist principles of, you know, the unity of man and nature. Because yes, the farmer did all this stuff to grow the tea and then he did all this stuff to pick it and process it in the right way and nature did its piece because obviously the high mountain influence which we'll talk about in a second and also the the leaf hopper just showing up and nibbling on leaves and completely changing the flavor profile and adding this completely unique element that you can't duplicate you can't replicate it just happens or it doesn't which it is a pretty amazing thing so next adjective we'll get to is the high mountain. Well, what does that mean? Well, high mountain refers to basically the elevation at which it was grown. This particular stuff was five or 6,000 feet above sea level, which is pretty high up. And why that is better uh, and why that makes it more expensive is because obviously it's higher elevation. So there's side of a mountain so there's less farmland so it's a little bit more scarce but also because it's higher up the plants have to work harder to grow and because they grow slower they tend to grow thicker and fuller leaves and thus have a, a more full spectrum and balance and a more unique flavor profile and on top of that it's the plants are dealing with way more environmental fluctuation meaning at because it's so high up, because it's so high up on the side of a mountain, daytime and nighttime temperatures is a huge gap. So the plant has to really adapt to be able to survive, which 
this is something that good quality tea shares with things like ginseng or reishi or any of the other high quality adaptogens is part of what makes them so beneficial for health is that they're so adaptable, meaning they have to adapt to survive. They're not this wimpy little lettuce that we're growing, you know, in our garden, like in a little box inside of a little house and we're just babying and taking care of it and controlling all the environments and giving it all the things so it'll survive because if we don't, it'll die. No, it's a very hearty, strong plant. And we take that in and we make it and we drink it. And that's also been shown hmm, <laughs> to, to give us uh, more health benefits, but also a better flavor, a better experience, a cleaner mouthfeel. So that's the organic, that's the high mountain, and then the oolong refers to the processing of tea because let's say on one end we have green tea on the total yin end, and then on the other end we have black tea, which we call the more yang end. So oolong is usually somewhere in the middle, and that is variable between the type of oolong and the producer of the oolong and the season and the harvest and the batch. It's really hard to generalize. But it's usually somewhere between probably, I think 15, 20, 30%, all the way up to like 90% oxidation. And that's kind of the, the range of oolongs. Now, if you see this stuff, you see this stuff from organic oolong tea, it's on the greener side. However, it is, it, it has really some rich, robust kind of oxidized or roasted flavors. So why I personally like high quality organic high mountain oolong tea, because it has a more complex flavor profile and you get all of the health benefits of green tea and you avoid some of the toxins and the stomach irritation and the allergens of pure green tea through the sort of roasting and oxidation process and you also develop a more balanced and complex profile and that allows you to just be able to drink more of it more of the time without side effects which means <laughs> more enjoyment and more fun and more benefits which is fun and is awesome if you like tea if you don't like tea, it's probably not that enjoyable, but I happen to really enjoy it, so I happen to really enjoy being able to drink more. So that sort of explains the name. And if you want to learn more about that, just go to organicoolongtea.com and read what is oolong tea, and that'll take you through the whole process, the whole eight stage plus process of what an oolong tea is and how it's produced and how every stage in the process affects the, the whole end result of the tea. So as a result, for example, this tea has just really a wave of flavor profiles. It has a wave of sort of enjoyment. The first flavor is like, ah, that's tea. And then you get this second layer of flavor and you get this third layer of flavor and, you, and then you get this echo, which means the echo is this floral component that really fills your throat and your whole sinus and nasal cavity and stays with you for a while after you've had the tea. Meaning it's been a while since I've drank and I've taken a sip, but my throat, my mouth, the way I smell, I still taste it and it still tastes really good. It's like kind of a peach, sweet, kind of chocolatey, floral flavor going on. And to me, that's it's pretty nice. And that's how you know you have quality. <laughs> that's how you know you have good stuff. And if you try this, this stuff, you know what I'm talking about. You get that echo. And other teas won't have that. And I can tell you just from, from experience, you start drinking really good tea like this, you just might lose a taste or lose an enjoyment for other kinds of teas. And I'm just gonna shut my door because the neighbor's dogs are just deciding to bark at each other. I don't know if you could pick it up on the mic, but I can hear it, it's a little distracting. So with this echo, 
is really what makes or breaks a good high quality tea. And for me, it's just a magical thing. I mean, I could just sit here for hours and talk about how tasty and how delicious the tea is and how good it makes you feel. But I think I've kind of already done that a little bit. It's just something you kind of have to taste for yourself because if you've never had it and you're new to it, it's, it's very unique. It's very, just very special. There's nothing else like it. And, you know, a lot of people just get tea and think they have to put like milk and sugar in it. And I guess, yeah, you have to do that if it's not good or if it's like really black, just oxidized tea that's just not really that great. But stuff like this has a natural inherent sweetness. And it just has, a, it has a, such a balanced flavor. So it has a sweetness, some floral elements going on, and then just like a touch of bitterness and astringency at the end, just to balance it out and just to make it a really holistic kind of flavor profile. So even from just drinking these few cups that I've had here over however long this video has been going on, Definitely I'm feeling it in my body, feeling it in my mind, feeling more clear headed, more awake. Feel that my whole sinus cavity cleared out. I can smell better. I can see better. I can focus better, much more aware of my peripheral environment and my whole being right now. And all of that while being calm, meaning I could lay down and probably take a nap right now if I wanted to. Not that I do, because I'd rather just sit here and talk about tea for another couple of hours, but that's just indicating that it is not this crazy stimulation going on that so many people are, are so afraid of. And really, humans have been using plants like this and other alkaloid containing plants for a really long time. And if we're using them in the right way, in the right context, and using the right quality, and we don't have any major imbalances, then usually it can be a fairly safe thing. And what I mean is obviously for someone with huge adrenal imbalance or kidney issues or other major problems where things significantly imbalance you all the time, yeah, it's probably not good for you, but tea is one of the most, it is the second beverage behind water. <laughs> it is the most widely consumed thing on the planet. It's really insanely well studied. So it's pretty darn safe. But again, it comes down to what works for you. What do you like? What do you enjoy? And what fits your flavor profile? But I wanted to, in this video to share with you some important things about water, about tea, about the benefits of tea in my tea set. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been helpful. Be sure to check out organicoolongtea.com and I will talk to you soon.